Making music in a controlled environment can be quite tricky because you need to hear exactly what you're putting together in the box. A recording studio is a very controlled environment and this is why acoustic treatment was invented to help music producers and engineers hear the sounds that they are creating and manipulating in their purest form. You may just decide to set up your studio monitors on your desk and carry on with making music. That's your choice. But I bet you, you're not going to hear the sounds that you're creating in their purest form that way. Today on Making Music with Aquarius, we talk acoustic treatment and the simple things that you can do in your home studio or project studio to hear the purest sound. And that's what's coming up. Hey, hey, I'm Akurios and you're welcome to Making Music with Akurios. Now, this is all about music production, audio engineering, mixing, mastering music, how I use my plugins, my choices, and so on and so forth. If you're seeing me for the first time, my name is Akurios. I'm a music producer, a musician, an audio engineer, a voice coach, among other things. Now, if you're interested in making music with me, then go ahead and tap that subscribe button and make sure you tap the notifications bell so that you're notified every time there's a new episode of Making Music with Aquarius. On this show, we talk about music production and everything that has to do with making music. And today we're focusing on some of the things that you need to do to your space, to your music creation space, to be able to hear the sounds that you're working on in their purest form. Yes, we're talking about acoustic treatment and I'll be showing you my own setup and what I've done to my own room and how it helps me hear the sounds that I work on in their purest form, or maybe close. So let's get right to it. So as you can see here, this is my setup. This is my console right here, my desk. And then I have bass traps on both sides, both corners behind the desk. And I also have a diffuser panel right behind the desk also. Now bass traps have to be in both corners, especially behind the studio monitors because bass frequencies tend to collect at the corners. You don't want that. Okay, so um, these are their positions and this is how they should be set up. Now, if we take a closer look at this, we see the bass trap on the right side, right behind the right speaker and the one on the left. And the wedge design of the bass trap helps to trap the low frequencies and get them literally lost in the trap. Low frequency sounds gather in corners. So when you have your music playing through your speakers, if you walk to a corner in your room, you're going to hear the lower frequencies louder than every other frequency band. Now, this is just physics. When you have angles in your room, the low frequencies tend to get comfortable in these corners. So this is why bass traps need to be installed at these corners so that they can absorb the low frequency sound. Another important thing we should take note of is the equilateral triangle that should be formed between both studio monitors and your listening position, your actual head. So speakers should be around your ear height so that they're pointing directly to your head on both sides of your head. This means that the distance between both studio monitors should be exactly the same as the distance between your head and each of the studio monitors. Also, we need to have acoustic panels on either side of the room, either side of your mix position on the left and the right, because we need to absorb the first reflections coming from the studio monitors, because you don't want to have the sound that you're trying to listen to coming back at you multiple times. So reflections have to be absorbed. To precisely determine where exactly to place your acoustic panels on either side of your room, you need to have someone hold a mirror against the wall and move that mirror across the wall until you can see the reflection of the speaker on the opposite side of the room. At that specific point where you can see the reflection of the speaker on the other side of the room, there has to be an acoustic panel to absorb the reflections from that speaker. It's also important to have acoustic panels above, right above your listening position, so that while you sit down, you don't hear the reflections that are bouncing off the ceiling and coming back at you. It could either be acoustic panels that absorb the sound or diffusers that scatter the reflections so that they don't come back at you exactly the same way they left the studio monitors. Also, you need to have another panel right behind your listening position to make sure that you don't have reflections 
from behind. As you can see here, I have diffuser panels that help to scatter the sound that comes from the studio monitors so that the sound doesn't come back at me exactly the same way it left the studio monitors. Now you don't have to have diffuser panels here. You could have something to absorb the sound like foam, rock wool, or something else that is built specifically from soft material that can absorb the sound. The reason I have diffuser panels here is because I don't want the room to sound too dead. All right, now before you set up your bass traps at the corners, before you set up your acoustic panels on the sides, on the angles of first reflection, before you set up your cloud, before you set up your panels, the absorptive or diffusive panels behind the speakers and behind your listening position, before you do all that, there's something you should know. And that is that you need to set up your console lengthwise in the room. This means that your desk and your entire workspace, your listening position, should be facing one of the narrower walls. A room with all its sides being different is the most ideal situation. But what we have in most home studios is a rectangular shape, and that's what we have to work with. So you're going to have to set up lengthwise. This is because low frequencies need more space to travel due to the wavelength of these frequencies. So setting up lengthwise will help you hear clearly the entire frequency spectrum of the sound that's coming out of your studio monitors. And let me drop this here. There's no need to have very large studio monitors in a small room. Studio monitors with seven inch woofers and one inch tweeters are absolutely fine for a room that's not up to 15 feet long. And if the room is even shorter, maybe 10 feet long or 12 feet long, then it's absolutely fine to use a six inch woofer for that particular room. So all the very best with setting up your home studio and taking care of all the acoustic treatment for your current workspace, okay? It's important to hear the sound that you're working on in its truest form, or maybe just close enough to its truest form, <laughs> all right? So if you found that helpful, go ahead and tap the like button so more people can find the content, more people can find the video and also get help. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do well to do that right now. Tap that subscribe button and tap the notification bell and make sure you're notified every single time that there's new content on this channel. Until next time, when we see you again, I'm Akurios and I'm out.